when art happens, there are times when you can take art from a cuisine perspective, not only change your life, but life of your family and those around you. And sitting in the studio right now is a very talented artist that has taken all of our artistic skills and transformed that in a really creative way in cuisine. Welcome to the show, Monica. Thank you for having me. Pleasure having Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Art just happens. Tell yes. us a little bit about you and how art has impacted your life and how you brought it into these yummy treats. You did. Um, basically, I... Uh, I started um, years ago uh, in um, managing my my health with fitness, mm -hmm. and uh, didn't take much approach to what I was eating. And over time, uh, life and transitioning, I felt that I was um, dealing with body mass, weight, and so could, you're an active could, you're an active kid, very active child. Um, grew up as an athlete. Okay. Um, winning awards and accomplishments and uh, just didn't take much thought into into the food that I was consuming. Um, so really, until I met my husband, uh, who then showed me um, the wonderful opportunities of making better food choices while he was training triathlons, I then got exposed to making making those choices and, and transitioning slowly. But soon after, we had... Um, our first son in 2007, our second son in 2010, and then dealing with um, motherhood and all of the challenges and stresses and the wonderful things that come with that new job. Um, but soon after, I was then exposed to the fact that our uh, old eldest son um, was dealing with um, challenges in school and that extended to needing um, attention and, and care right away to help with um, with, with dealing with his uh, attention and behavior and his social challenges. That seems to become more and more yes. common yes. th these days. And, and you're finding natural ways to help him through that process. Yeah, and until that happened, it was actually incredible. I um, was then exposed to meeting other families that were using food as, uh, as a choice, as a method to help their children. So then that took us an entirely new element and finding out ways that we could um, expose our own family to making those changes. And we chose to do a food intolerance test. And shortly we found out that that our son was having a hard time with digesting certain foods. So we went through an elimination process and we took it even a step further by also targeting, um, just using natural sources of colors and flavors, um, sugars, it really just starting from scratch again and learning how to cook and how to bake from using alternative methods. So you used to be a baker. I did. A traditional baker. Yeah, for years. Okay. Growing up, high school, baked, cake decorated, everything. And what are the things you had to cut out now to, to form new cuisine? Gluten? Gluten, dairy, wheat, for a long time, egg. How All the do top you bake? ones. How do you bake with... Okay. We eat like birds, right? So it was, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Like no, you know, it, um, it, was, it was hard, I, I'll admit. It was really overwhelming. Most people don't even want to think about what they need to do um, to make those changes. Um, but uh, starting in small baby steps, slowly working, finding out what you could do instead of using an egg, finding out that you could use fiber, finding out you could use chia, finding out that there are egg replacements out there. You can use applesauce, you can use bananas. So it's quite phenomenal. And thinking about all the nutritional benefits that come with that, which is yes. also very cool. And then um, the flours were difficult. Um, of course, changing this method of baking or cuisines um, can get a little bit more expensive because you're using more natural sources. So um, instead of using a standard flour, then we're moving over to a coconut flour. We're moving over to an almond flour. We're moving into a brown rice as a filler. Um, you know, um, wonderful, wonderful bean flours, just incredible flavors full of proteins, nutrients. It, um, it really took it a step much further. And how has it helped? How has it changed things? Well, in our own house, um, again, we persevered and we learned how to do this. It's taken four years to transition our kitchen 
over from getting rid of all the old stuff into our new stuff. And um, we definitely have less packaged foods in our house because we're doing more from scratch. We do large batches and we love our freezer. So with everything labeled and I try to make ample to get us through as, as a busy mom with two kids, uh, I need to do that. So um, yeah, and really taking it uh, to the next level, um, finding out that we didn't need to use granular sugars, we could then modify that with uh, maple syrup and honey, um, agave, different sources uh, to cleanse that palate. And then of course, we really reduce the sugar intake quite a bit as well, um, because instead of having an ice cream, we could make a natural sorbet out of using organic strawberries. So it, um, it really impacted the entire family together, it turned into an entire family process. And the kids have been exposed to their most favorite delicious beverage till this date is freshly squeezed lemonade, which is as simple as taking apples and lemon. No sugar added, completely natural, all from the original source. So they have um, engaged themselves with the food that we make in our home now. And I feel like, well, we all, A, are healthier, we're, we're active, but we're stronger. Um, the kids are, we're fueling our children's mind and body. Um, they're getting a full day of school and they're happy. Our um, mental state is healthy. So overall, I can't complain. And um, yeah, so we just, uh, it's overall, it's, it's been good. And we can also monitor the levels of um, the hyperness that a lot of kids will engage with based on the food that they're consuming as well. So it has had its challenges, especially being exposed to um, situations where Families want to go out for meals. Um, there's events, uh, school has an impact. So there's pressures that go along with it. So over time we've learned to adjust and I try to make everything else that all the other children are enjoying, but making them differently. And um, my kids are better off eating that way. And I think it's a foundation that they will always live with. So, yeah, so my my wife has gone through the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so she had to cut out gluten, dairy, soy, and pretty much everything else but water. <laughs> and and we used to be big foodies and yeah, we'd go out yeah. at restaurants all the time. Like that was our thing to bond. And yes. it was a major change in, in our in our lives to, to to walk through that. But it's wild. Just just cutting that stuff out, she used to get exhausted a lot. That we'd go for a walk around the block or she'd get stressed out. She'd have to crawl up the stairs when, when we we're done. And then she changed her diet. She cut out certain things. And all That's of a sudden right. she's walking 18 kilometers on the Bruce Trail without even batting an eye. It's, it's amazing. It's phenomenal how much that, but one thing I will say is trying to cook gluten-free and bake gluten-free. She's an amazing baker. She's phenomenal. She still couldn't figure it out. So she, <laughs> we now buy stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm glad that there, there are chefs like you or individuals like you that then rethink of food and, and think creatively enough to make something that tastes accurate and mm -hmm. pleasing. And it's not sawdusty or dry. That's it's, right. It's very, very awesome to, to have well, you here. I've had no choice. I have kids. Yeah. So it has to taste good. And healthy does taste this good. The healthy food that I make really does because I've had to make sure they can eat it. And, um, and it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it, you have to go through withdrawals sometimes with especially granular sugars or um, table salts, uh, changing over those, um, getting familiar with flavors like cracked pepper and, and just taking it one step further and really starting um, to allow the children uh, to really work with her palate and um, savor those flavors instead of it being toxic and full of bad right. stuff. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I want to taste a little bit Please. because one thing you cannot do at home is taste. I, I put it on the camera, but then Brian, the production guy, get mad at me. He's all slurry and stuff and he spends a lot of money on it. You don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but anyway, we have some really cool yummies here. <laughs> Could you tell us a little about some of your products? Here? Of course. Um, so over the years, um, we um, had become dairy free. And so we missed the opportunity of having any types of creams. Yes. So 
a wonderful method to overcome that is using cashews and almonds. Okay. And uh, cashews give a wonderful smooth texture. I like to, in this particular product, I use um, an additive which which is uh, freshly milked almonds and to subside some of the cashew flavors. Yes. And um, with this particular product, I've made three different flavors for people with not only dietary restrictions, but people that are wanting to eat tree nuts differently. Okay. So they're fueling their bodies with, um, with immense amount of proteins. So what do you want me to taste? So our favorite um, is the parsley and chive, and it's an organic spread um, base. Everything is been been handcrafted um, by uh, myself. Just kidding. That's... <laughs> Most people are quite wowed with the fact that you can actually eat cashews and almonds this way. It is odd. There, there's no, the texture is very fine. It's just yeah. full of bursting with flavor. I want to dip again, but I don't want to double dip. Can, can, it's I, can yours. I double dip? It's mine. It's, it's yours. mine. It's, it's really yours. mine. But but it's no, it's it's mm hmm mm hmm. Uh, the texture is like an amazing butter, but I can't tell you how much it just fills my palate. It, it's it's absolutely stunning. And nothing's overpowering. Mm -hmm. And you just want to eat it on crackers. Like you just want to spread it over everything. No, um, a lot of people are, um, you know, they're buying this and oh, they're uh, they're telling me that they're they're not only just using it on a cracker, but they're we spread it on our bread at home. Yes. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity for the kids. They don't have to always have meat during all their meals, so mm -hmm. it's a wonderful meal replacement. So I can throw that on their bread um, with vegetables. We okay, I can't stop. often um, <laughs> we often I just use the base recipe mm -hmm. and I add it to our salad dressings at home. So if we're ever going to have um, maybe a non meat meal, mm -hmm. then we'll just throw that in there and I know that they're going to get the reaps of the benefits of the nutrition and that. And if I um, wanted to purchase this before I eat it all, <laughs> how, how much would it be? That would be $5 okay. um, at the farmer's market. I'm at the farmer's market every Saturday morning mm -hmm. um, from mid-May till mid-October. Okay. And I also... The farmer's market in Collingwood? The, yes, the okay. farmer's market okay. in Collingwood. Okay. And I hope to expand this product to the local t local specialty shops throughout the Georgian Bay. Absolutely. Okay, I, so. I must I must put this down. Okay, okay. could you try the others? Oh, re oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So um, what goes nicely after that, would, you would probably like a, a turmeric with chive. Okay. Uh, wonderful heaps of health benefits uh, to this spread. Um, not only digestive, but... Um, a lot of people are recovering from cancer and yes. they're always advised to have okay. lots of turmeric in their diet. Um, so it's it's making phenomenal headways, this particular spice. It's much more mild, very light, but also very full. The, um, the turmeric actually will build in flavor over time as well as right. it sits in, um, in its spread. Right. So you'll notice as it um, I'm not saying I'm not fridge. saying mild from but by week, mm -hmm. but but a very very it's a softer palate. You more so feel it laterally on your tongue rather than in the center. You know, so um, mm -hmm. it's lovely, absolutely lovely. I'm glad you like it. How long did it take you to? You're you're gonna make me gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, savor in small small doses. Small <laughs> savor in small doses. Um, I've been developing and working on this recipe for about seven months. Um, a lot of taste testing. A lot of sensory testing um, and there are wonderful people in Collingwood that this I've connected with to help me get to the stage. My teeth buds are dancing. <laughs> it's like fine dining in a glass like really it truly is it truly is and I normally okay. am I'm not like this but it's just really gorgeous. Okay thank you. Really gorgeous. No, I'm not. I'm not going to taste the third. Well, should I taste the third one? If you like I, to, I must say, how if we wanted to find you? Yes, we have the farmers market. I understand you're building a, a website as well. There is a landing page on the website um, at the company CrookedTree.ca. There's also a Facebook page. I've yes. also recently started a, um, a Natural Food Genie Facebook yes. page, uh, which will connect to YouTube, and it uh, just showing people small. Uh, ways that they can modify 
options. Their food choices. Excellent. So you're not just a lady to purchase really yummy goods from, but we no, can learn No, you can learn from something you. from me as that well. I have lots to we, offer. We must check out your website, and we're quickly running out of time. So I will Thank quickly you. nibble on this. What is this? Salt and pepper organic crackers? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. you got to find out for yourself. This would be a peppercorn cracker. Mm -hmm. And... Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's full of almonds. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Actually, the almonds have been sprouted, so it releases the vitamins and the enzymes and the nutrients from the almond. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I also use the almond nut themselves mm -hmm. when I make this particular artisan cracker. You taste the black pepper, the black pepper pops. The, the almond, again, covers your palate as you'd expect an almond to be. It tastes like salted almonds, right? But at the same time, the way it's composed, it kind of breaks apart quite nicely, you know, and there's, of course, no dryness. There's none of that. It doesn't sound like it's a cracker wannabe. It doesn't taste like it. It actually tastes like a real McCoy. We're, we're changing the name, actually, to a biscuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's actually, it's been modified. I've been listening to the customers and getting feedback from the market. So mm. I'm making some, uh, some changes to those. Okay. Must taste, I must say, must do. Must work worth every penny. I'm so thankful okay. that, that you're here. I know you have pictures of, of some of your preparations and what you go through. So let's quickly spin through some of those sure. things and share it with, with our audience here. This is your lovely family. I remember that was when you're fighting your weight difficulties. Yes. And so we see yes. the before and after. Before and after. Well done. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's made some substantial changes mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me as well, yeah. And that is some of what I ate, I'm sure, today. Yes. God, gorgeous photography. Love it. Thank you. Yes. This is your family, I guess? Yep, those are two, our two boys, and uh, just showing them that they can make the food themselves as well and enjoy it. <laughs> they love being in the kitchen. Love that photo. That is just gorgeous. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was all because of Marshall. Yes, yeah, yeah. Marshall, your eldest. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's right. Oh, pleasure having you on the Thank show. You for having I, me. You've, you've got it. a. Con I didn't taste this one yet. I didn't taste this one yet. Okay, real, real quick. Real quick. That's the cumin. Mm, that's a much, much fuller flavor onto this one, eh? Mm, mm, it has a punch, a bite to it. I'm not going to describe it. You're going to have to try it yourself. I'm sorry. I'm not telling you. I'm done. I, I'm going to eat all these in five minutes. We'll see you in the next show. Because sometimes art happens. Art Happens is brought to you in part by the Spalding School of Music, Backland Photography,